Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 25th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Looks like sextortion scams are just not going away, but they keep tuning their methodology. So originally what we saw is emails that went around that used actual passwords that you may have used in the past that leaked and they included this password as evidence that the attacker controlled your system in order to convince you to actually pay the ransom to have evidence of you browsing porn deleted. The latest wave still includes a password, but it doesn't really appear a password that's associated with your account according to recent password breaches. Instead, it looks like the attacker is trying to cast a wider net by essentially reaching email users that haven't had their password leaked recently. So instead, they're just inserting a random password, hoping that it looks convincing enough. Maybe they even accidentally hit the right right password to get you to pay up for the ransom. Also, the Bitcoin target addresses are randomized in this case, so each email appears to have a different address. In past campaigns, we saw a lot of uh, reuse of these addresses, which actually made it a little bit easier to track these campaigns and to figure out how much money the attackers made. These attacks have been quite profitable in the past, so that's probably why attackers are trying trying various variations of this scheme. And Apple today released the latest version of macOS, macOS Mojave or 10.14. Now with this update, Apple did fix eight different security vulnerabilities. Some of these security vulnerabilities we have seen last week with the update of iOS. Of course, iOS and macOS share some code. Now I expect these same vulnerabilities to be present in macOS High Sierra or 10.13 and earlier versions versions of Mac OS and OS 10 as well. But typically what's happening is that Apple will release a separate just security update for the older operating system, I would hope within the next week or so. So be on the lookout. Now, with the release of macOS Mojave, uh, there are a number of new security and privacy protections that Apple put in place that are supposed to isolate applications better from each other and restrict access to private content. Now, one item that's protected is the address book. Security researcher Patrick Waddle, who has a good history with finding vulnerabilities in Mac OS, uh, has found a vulnerability that actually allows the bypass of these restrictions. He was able to access uh, the address book from the command line, which typically shouldn't be possible. He published a video with a uh, proof of concept exploit. No details yet. Uh, they're going to be released in November at an Apple security conference. No word yet from Apple if there will be a patch coming out for this vulnerability, uh, but I believe uh, Apple has just been notified of this vulnerability. So a little bit too early to expect a response. Now, while this is certainly a significant issue, you have to keep in mind that this particular separation was introduced just today in Mojave. So earlier versions of OS X or Mac OS didn't have any separation like that. So what he did here is of course possible without bypassing any security boundaries on older versions of Mac OS. And Cloudflare today started supporting encrypted server name indication for HTTPS connections to Cloudflare. This in particular is significant because there are a lot of websites that are behind Cloudflare. So just looking for an IP address doesn't really help you to figure out what website a user is connecting to because if a user connects to a Cloudflare IP address, they may connect to any of a few hundred different websites that are hosted behind that IP address. Server name indication is part of the TLS client hello message and it essentially tells the server what host you're trying to connect to and in the past or typically still this is sent in the clear. 
DNS is used to indicate that a certain domain supports this encrypted surname indication. Of course, if you are behind Cloudflare, then Cloudflare usually takes care of DNS for you so they can insert the necessary records. Now, you may say, hey, uh, I will still be able to see where people go to by looking at these DNS queries. That's not quite right anymore either because Cloudflare also supports the DNS over HTTPS standard where DNS is encrypted as well. So by supporting server name indication, Cloudflare is able to provide a completely private browsing experience for any sites that are hosted by its service. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.